Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode, and I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Dr. Barrett Matthews, and he goes by the mantra, be everywhere all at once. I'm always scouring the globe for entrepreneurs, people on the cutting edge. Dr. Barrett also has a podcast called Media Boss, and so today we're going to be talking about all about marketing, being everywhere, a media personality, and separating yourself from the rest of the field. So he's got a lot of interesting ideas, cutting edge ideas, and happy to welcome uh, Dr. Barrett to the show. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me, Christopher. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. So talk about how you got started and you know how you came to be doing what you're doing. Well, I'll give you the, the abridged version. Um, you know, in college, I started out thinking I wanted to be an architect as an architecture major, but that kicked my butt quickly. And I got into mass media arts and I enjoyed it. My grades shot up. I just really enjoyed it. Then I started doing internships with television stations, radio stations. I started calling games on the radio for college. And I just I, I just enjoyed it. Then I, as an intern, gentlemen, I don't know if you're a sports fan or your listeners are sports fans, but I interned at WUSA TV here in the Washington, D.C. area. And one of the people who worked there as a weekend sportscaster was CBS's James Brown. And he kind of took me under his wing. And he helped me when I was interning. He helped me as far as putting a word in for me when I got out of college. So I got a job as assistant director for the news station there. Then I moved up to New York, worked at CBS Sports, uh, thanks to a word he put in for me. So I got some experience in two of the biggest markets in the world in media. And I, that's how I got started in it. I saw good times with it. I saw bad times with it. I, I uh, ended up coming back to the D.C. area, working at a cable access company. Uh, then I got out of it all together, to be honest with you, and I started working in the business sector of things. And no matter what I did, media kept calling me back, doing interviews, recording something, writing something, editing something. And I realized that, you know what, I, it, it's never going to escape me. I may as well dig into it. And that's when I ended up starting what I do now. Yeah, it's a fantastic journey. And, um, you know, this whole area of media, it's all about communication, branding, marketing, sales, and mm -hmm. it's... Um, you know, some of the biggest networks, um, you know, sports, entertainment, yeah. music, fashion, art, everything. So, yeah. So as you know, media is very ubiquitous. So talk about, and you have this idea of be everywhere all at once. And, um, you know, I kind of get the gist, but I think the audience will really sure. love your take on it. For sure. Sure. Well, here's the thing from, from when I started in media till now, Media has evolved immensely, a uh, great deal. When I started in media, back, I mean, be honest with you, it was back in the in the mid '80s, early to mid '80s, actually. And if you wanted to be on someone's radio show or TV program, or even have an article done about you, you had to hope that someone saw you and found you interesting enough to give you probably two minutes of time. Now, media is literally at your fingertips. I mean, you can pick up your phone and record a podcast. You can pick up your phone and transcribe a blog or something. You can do so many things now with your laptop, with your tablet. It's literally at your fingertips. You don't have to wait on someone. So one thing that I try to pass on to people is that we have been taught a couple of paradigms that really don't apply anymore. One of the things we've been taught is you need to find one area and drill down on that area. Whatever it is, if you if you write books, drill down on writing and writing, and you'll get you'll get found if you keep drilling down and writing. Well, that is kind of I don't want to use a, a a word to describe it, but let's just put it this way: to say that writing and writing and writing, not that writing is bad, because I encourage writing, but not that writing is bad, but writing that, that to say that that's all you need to do is to say that every person that Christopher Lou wants to serve reads reads books all the time. Now, we know that's not true because everybody's not a reader. Everybody you want to serve watches your podcast. That's not true. So there are several forms of media, social media, documentaries. There's so, so many different forms of media. And what I'm saying is this. You should be having a presence on several forms of media. Another paradigm that we have been taught is to find your client avatar and I do believe in that. Find, find your client avatar and go wherever they are, because that's where you'll find your business. Well, 
I take a different approach to it. Find your client avatar. I agree with that. But make it so they can find you. Keep in mind, if that's your client avatar, they are looking for what you offer. If they are looking for what you offer, you need to be where they are looking. <laughs> Don't just go looking for them all over the place. Make sure you have a presence where they're looking. So if they're looking on a podcast to find someone to serve them, have a podcast there. If they're looking for a Roku TV show that serves them, make sure you have a presence on TV. If they're looking for a webinar or, or if they're looking for a book or something, make sure you have a presence in those areas so they can find you. I always like to use the example of the comedian Kevin Hart. And I tell people, I said, Kevin Hart is everywhere. He is on so many different forms of media. And he does that by design. That is not an accident. He wants to be in your face because he knows that in Hollywood, you can disappear like that. So he wants to make sure that he stays relevant. And I say to business owners, why aren't you taking that approach? Make sure that you are everywhere, er everywhere all at once. So everyone can find you and that way they can pay you. Because the one thing about this, Christopher, if you wanted, here's the thing, McDonald's doesn't come knock on your door and say, Christopher, we have a new Big Mac on sale right now. McDonald's makes it so that when you want a Big Mac, you can always find one. Make yourself findable to people. That's that's the new way of doing things. Make it, And you have ways to do that now. Like I said, it's right at your fingertips. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And um, and um, the other, so I love this idea. And then, uh, yeah, I've, I've always, um, when, <laughs> when I started listening to individuals, you know, talk about, you know, the client avatar, uh -huh, uh -huh. it's kind of uh it just kind of um you know it's like you've heard it so many ways. yeah it's kind of i mean we've been hearing it for like 15 20 years now <laughs> so what one question is talking about is um you the other question is uh nobody cares what you know what do you mean by that well what i mean is that nobody cares what you know until you control you see there's, there's, a, and there's a part to that sentence there's a dot 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 and <laughs> what i mean by that is nobody cares what you know until you become a media boss. See, a lot of people think that my, my moniker Media Boss Pro is about me being a media boss. It's not. It's about you becoming a media boss. And what I describe a media boss as is someone who controls their media. Like I said, it's at your fingertips now. You should be controlling your media. There's so many business people out there right now, speakers, coaches, whomever, who are sitting there waiting or making phone calls every day, hoping that someone chooses them to be on their platform. They've hired people to try to get, get me on their platform. And I say, create your, create your own platform. Like, like you have your own podcast here. Create your own platform. Stop waiting on someone to call you because I can guarantee this. Now, keep in mind, you and I have never met in person, have we? But I can guarantee you that people have listened to your podcast or been guests on your podcast and have invited you to be a guest on theirs. Am I right? Yeah. Because you created a platform, it created some synergy where people say, you know what? I need to have him on mine. And so that way you get on other people's platforms. Stop waiting for other people because you control your own media now. It makes it so that you are in, contr in control of everything. And, and the, th the thing is, is this. Once you can do that, you move from being a media personality to being a media boss. You all remember, we're, we're old enough to remember when Oprah Winfrey had her TV show. <laughs> At that time, Oprah was a media personality. She was on TV every day, host, hosting a show, interviewing people. Then Oprah started owning studios. She started owning magazines. She started owning networks. All of a sudden then, Oprah is a media boss. And all I'm telling you now, of course, I'm not telling you you got to be open, but, but what I'm saying is that you still have the ability to control your own media and stop waiting on other people. There's so many people wasting time while they're waiting on someone else to call their name. Call your own doggone name. That's all I'm saying when I, when I say nobody cares what you know. They don't care until you control it. Because you're sitting there waiting for someone to notice me. I have something to tell you. No one cares. Make them know it. Control your media. Put your message out into the stratosphere and make them know whatever your message is. Make them hear you. As I always say, make them hear your voice. Nobody's going to select me. They're going to select, you know, so, uh, you know, my thinking was instead of competing in this whole sea, 
why don't you create your own thing and exactly. you don't have to depend on and just you don't have to like you said you don't have to wait for people um and it uh reminds and me it's of time simple, it's so simple now <laughs> I remember i remember years ago some guys that i worked with they were holding these uh big events and they were speakers and they had these other speakers i was even feeding people to them that they were, were they, brought, they brought up as speakers and i said they never asked me to speak i wonder why they never asked me to speak <laughs> and i you know I, I i thought about it but then i said barrett Stop waiting on them. Create your speaking platform. So I started hosting my own events. And you know who I invited? Those same people <laughs> to speak on my event for two reasons. One, they got to see, you know what? He can speak. He's good. The other thing is, guess who came with them? Their audience. Uh -huh. So now their audience got to see that I can speak. So guess who they started inviting on their stages? Me. <laughs> because I created my own platform. I'm telling people, stop waiting for someone like you did. You created your own platform because you didn't want to keep waiting for someone to say you fit into this little box. I, I love you for that, man. Good job. Yeah. The other thing is, and I love this, um, you know, it also reminds me of uh, Teller Perry and a lot of the um, like Jay-Z and they didn't yeah. want to work with these record labels and studios because they were they would get screwed over so they yeah. just created their own oh yeah so that, that, that's, that's, that's a smart that's a good analogy that's a very good analogy because it's true i yeah. mean we're in a we're in an era now where we don't have to be tied to those old rules anymore mm. we don't have to I, I, I mean don't get me wrong i'm not saying that it's not a good thing to for someone to ask you to be on their platform yeah. but if you're sitting around waiting for it well you're, you're you're putting yourself in that situation because you don't have to. If you don't know how to create your own platform, there are people that know how to help you do that. But to sit there and wait for it is kind of ridiculous to me. Uh, yeah, you and me think very, very alike. The other question I have is, you know, along these lines of breaking all the rules and um, and flourishing, you talk about separating yourself from the rest in your field. How do you do that? Well, it's funny. Um, a friend of mine, actually one of the guys I was telling you who – uh, finally got me on the stage. He he had a um he had a question he put in front of an audience, and this was um now I don't, I don't know how many of your audience are sports fans. Are you are you a sports fan yourself? I mean, I, I watch. I mean, I'm not. Well, a fan you can answer this one. You can answer. This. He says, "What is the job of an NFL wide receiver? To catch balls and make touchdowns. That is what I would say. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. But that is not the job. Because let me put it to you like this." If I threw a football to you, chances are you could catch it, right? If you turn around and ran, you could probably run to the end zone, right? <laughs> so you can catch a ball and run to the end zone, but that doesn't make you an NFL wide receiver. He said what makes an NFL wide receiver is when they can get separation. He said because when a wide receiver cannot get separation, he is no longer on the team. I don't care how well you can catch the ball. When you can't separate yourself from that defender, you can no longer you no longer have a place in the league when you can't get get the ball to the end zone because they can outrun you. You can no longer get into this league. So the job of NFL wide receiver is to get separation. There are plenty of high school kids who can catch a ball, who can <laughs> score a touchdown if, if they're allowed to. But when they can't get separation, they don't have a job. So in business. Your job is to separate yourself from those who are out there in business. So let's say that you are an accountant and there are five other accountants in your city. You all can pretty much say you do similar things. You have to figure out what is that one unique quality about you that separates you. And you may have a hard time finding that out. But that's why I say media comes in, because if you can utilize media to catapult you above what they do, to make yourself look different than what they do. And sometimes, let, let's face it, have you ever seen a commercial that you think is the stupidest thing on TV and you're, or on radio and you're like, oh, I'm so sick and tired of this commercial that drives me nuts, but it stays in your head? That's what they did to separate themselves. It, you may think it's ridiculous, but when it comes down to something that you might need, they come to mind because they separated themselves from everyone else. It doesn't have to be great quality all the time. It yeah. just has to make you different and make you stand out from the crowd. Now, of course, you would rather have it high quality. You'd rather have it look good. But sometimes some of the high quality, some of the great looking things 
look like someone else's high quality. <laughs> so you don't want it to look like everyone else. You do want something to make it stand out. So what I tell people to do is to separate yourself by using media. It can be in different forms. It doesn't have to be polished all the time, but it has to be something that makes you look different than everyone else out there so that when people think of something that they need that you offer, that yeah. they think of you. Yeah, I love that. Um, it's it's all it goes along the lines of uh, working smarter, uh, not working harder. Yeah, you know, like I said, this conversation is so it resonates with me and also the audience because um, it's just talking about a uh, you know thinking non traditionally and um, you also have this thing or this concept calling called get paid around the globe and expand on that. Yeah, sure. And see, that's the beauty of where media has evolved. Because, like, you know, in the past, say television, we had our local TV stations and, you know, we may see a national TV thing on our, on our TV. Same with radio. We had local radio and stuff like that. We never heard radio in other cities. Now with the Internet, with all these different things we can do with media, you can type something on social media right now and it can be seen all the way in South Africa. I could put something on TikTok and it can be seen in Taiwan. I can, I can create a podcast and it can be heard or seen in, in Spain. It is like you can immediately give yourself a global impact. And there are tools out there. Like right now, with I'm working with a, a company right now where we're able to take my services, my content, and translate it into different languages so that people in Mexico can hear it in Spanish so that people in Japan can hear it in Japanese so that people in Italy can hear it in Italian. And I'm, I've already we've got the, the equipment. We've already got everything in order to do that now so that now I can have a global presence instead of just narrowing my, my scope. That way we can expand it and make sure that we can control our media and have it all over the globe. Yeah, it reminds me of like for like a uh, modern like the uh the book tour where you had to go and rent place and you had to drive or fly and then you know had the you know book signings but now you know podcasting and with yeah YouTube, it's you know you can just like you said just be everywhere all at once and uh, yeah you can yeah you can we have but see the th first thing about it christmas we have to we have to expand our thinking you know that it's the mindset that we're some of us are still stuck in that little cubby hole i, I remember talking to a gentleman some years ago, and he's he's actually a radio uh, mogul. He made billions of dollars working in the radio industry. And mm -hmm. I thought I was being smart. You know, I'm having a conversation with him. And I said, I said, yeah, you know, I need to I need to uh, start thinking more outside the box. And he looked me dead in the eye and he says, why are you in a box? And all I could do was think, God, I, I guess I put myself there. <laughs> so I ever ever since that conversation, I have never used the phrase, I have to think outside the box, because I, I said, you know what? I don't want to be in a box, so I'm not putting myself in a box. And I can think differently, but I'm not putting myself in a box. And that's that, when he said that to me, it really resonated. So it's just one of those things that we have to expand our thinking and start seeing ourselves working internationally. I, I know for some people that scares them. For some people thinking, oh gosh, what if I have all these clients coming from China and I can't <laughs> serve them? Or what if I have all these people that want me to do work in Germany and I don't know what to do? Relax. You don't have that problem yet. When you have the problem, you'll figure out a way. But create. I would love to create that problem and then figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather do that than sit there and be afraid of even attempting to get it done. Yeah, quality problems, as you as you said. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Really fascinating. And so one one uh, thing that may come to the audience who are listening is this objection when you said be everywhere all at once. They're like they're like, oh, doc, I don't have uh, I don't have the time to write and produce video and podcasts. You know. Uh, how should they think about this or where should they start to become omnipresent? Uh, they should uh, schedule a call with me. That's, that's my favorite objection that I don't have yeah. time. <laughs> because what reason I started Media Boss Pro is because people say that to me all the time. I don't have time. So I said, well, if I took away the heavy lifting for them, then they have no reason not to do it. 
So what I just had people do is create raw content and my team takes it and we create different media for them for, with their content. So all they have to do is just create their content. We edit it. We put it, we polish it up. We make it look pretty. We put it on social media. We put it on podcasts. We'll put them on Roku TV. We'll uh -huh. do films for them. Depends on you know which package they want, but we take care of that for them. And don't get me wrong, we're not the only company that does media production for people, but I, I'm the only one I know of that does all the things that we do. Uh -huh. So those are the things that I, I tell people is like, you don't have to do all of that. If you want to do it, we can help you to make that happen. And for all the audience, let's thank Dr. Barrett for coming on and uh, just, like I said, out of the box thinking and inspiring and motivating as well as um, making us all laugh. And be sure to give his socials a like and follow, check out his services. Um, and thanks so much for coming on. Oh, man, I appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate you so much. Great podcast.